good evening to you all uh, we will start uh, the public lecture in few minutes so there is a small technical issue uh, you will be seeing this uh, this uh, the cover page little little blurred i think we will fix the technical issue soon please bear with us Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I think you all can hear me. Sure, we can. Okay, thank you. Sure, we can. Thank you very much. So, good evening to you all. Uh, I am Engineer Prasanna Narangoda, the Chairman of Building Services Engineering Sectional Committee. So you all are warmly welcome to the public lecture today. Uh, despite of your many works, busy schedules at this uh, uh, this occasions at this festival is uh, the time with. We can't hear you. Mr. Prasanna, I think you are muted. Can you hear me now? Hello. Oh, now you can. can. Now, but now okay. Yeah, whatever you spoke oh. earlier, we didn't hear anything because you were muted, Mr. Prasanna. Okay, sorry. sorry now, now it's okay. I think the host uh, muted all mics when the sound came out. I think my mics mics are also muted. Okay, sorry for that. Okay, good evening, everybody. I am Engineer Prasanna Narangode, uh, Chairman of Building Services Engineering Section Committee. So you all are warmly welcome uh, with your busy schedules, many works that you have come here today with us to spend about two hours participate in this public lecture. So lecture will be uh, done by. Uh, one of the pioneer in air conditioning is a senior engineer, engineer Chandana Dalugada, on uh, the subject of insight to new trends in air conditioning and navigation through limitations to applications. So it will be a very timely, important topic for everybody. I'm sure that you all will actively engage and will be uh, benefited and will share uh, your thoughts also finally during the Q&A sessions. So please keep, uh, I, I humbly request all of you to keep your mic uh, mute mode. That will be a great support to continue the lecture. And the lecture will be uh, there about uh, one hour or maybe one hour plus. Uh, and there will be about 30 minutes Q&A session after the public lecture. And we are hoping to complete or wind up the day before 8 p.m. Uh, so with all, without taking uh, without taking too much time, I would like to invite engineer Lakmini Abesuri to do the introduction. And engineer Ishan Ranganath will be doing the moderator role after that. So kindly invite uh, you engineer Lakmini Abesuri for the introduction. Engineer Lakmini Abesuri. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Lakmini Abesuria from Building Services Engineering Sectional Committee. I warmly welcome you all to the very first webinar organized by the Building Services Engineering Sectional Committee for the session 2020-2021. Thank you all for joining with us today. Our speaker today is Engineer Chandana Dalgoda, who will be talking to you on new trends in air conditioning and limitations to their applications, which is a timely topic. Engineer Chandana is a leading consultant in the fields of heating, ventilating, air conditioning, and refrigeration with experience over 40 years in Sri Lanka as well as overseas. 
He is an ASHRAE Distinguished Lecturer since 2011 and was the President of ASHRAE Sri Lankan Chapter on two sessions. Engineer Chandana has won ASHRAE Chapter Service Award and ASHRAE Regional Award of Merit in 2015. He is a Fellow of Institution of Engineers Sri Lanka. American Society of Heating, Refrigerating, and Air Conditioning Engineers, USA, and also a member of Chartered Institution of Building Service Engineers, UK. He is also working with the Green Building Council of Sri Lanka as a director. Engineer Chandana is a visiting lecturer at University of Moratua, University of Technology, and Green Building Council of Sri Lanka as well as a frequent resource person in CPD courses conducted by Institution of Engineers. In fact, Engineer Chandana is very keen on sharing his knowledge. Mm -hmm. Ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please join with me to welcome our speaker this evening, Engineer Chandana Dalgoda. I would like to remind that we will be running a live Q&A session at the end of the presentation. You can post your questions to the moderator through chat while the presentation is going on. We will direct your questions to the speaker at the end of the presentation. Now, let's move to the presentation. Over to you, sir. Thank you very much, Lakmini. Good evening to you all. Today is a rainy day and stormy day. Well, I hope we can continue without any problems. So this is insight to new trends in HVAC. There are new technologies and navigation through limitation to applications, some of which has some constraints uh, to applications. Contents are, I thought we should uh, discuss basic air conditioning systems first with little bit of psychometrics and then thermal comfort because most of the time, we forget the primary aim if it is used for comfort air conditioning. We sometimes take energy saving, energy conservation as the prime tool and try to neglect our, our main aim, that is comfort. So we should go through this as well before embarking on our main topic. That is new trends, something like displacement ventilation systems, and they are very much popular in other countries, European countries. Every design, it is at least some part is displacement volume systems, ventilation rather. Then chill beams, that is equally popular. Why? Why? It is not here. And what are the limitations we are going to discuss? As well as uh, high delta T applications. What are the benefits and limitations? Finally, dedicated outdoor systems. There is a wonderful system, especially for hot and humid climates. So we'll discuss these things. Take first one as uh, basic air conditioning systems. Now, air conditioning systems around us, we have seen it is not a uh, luxury anymore, but systems and the names that we may not use the proper, proper, proper wording. People are talking about split units. They are calling uh, variable refrigerant flow systems central systems. Now, these basic air conditioning systems are falling into four categories. One is all air systems, air and water, all water and unitary. These are the basic types. Just run through that. Now, all air system, air is the main energy trans transfer media. It, it, you have an air handling unit. Sometimes one air conditioner for several floors. 
no additional cooling required at the zone, but there's a massive advantage. Major equipment is centrally located away from the zone. That is a good advantage. Now it looks like this. Rooftop package units. Unfortunately, not popular in Sri Lanka, but other countries for commercial range air conditioning, that is for shops, malls, maybe, maybe small offices, very popular. Only thing we need a rooftop or otherwise we can put it on the ground as well. But basically it is rooftop, lot of advantages, lot of advantages. You don't need fresh air duct. You don't need to worry. You don't need to extract duct. Everything handles by itself. There are, there's an economizer. You can use it if, if, if it is in a uh, four seasonal country. So one way it is having a huge advantage, all air systems. Then comes the air and water system. Now air and water system is uh, well, well, well. It is air and water is brought to the zone. I don't think in Sri Lanka it is available. Both air and water is distributed to the congestion space. Now you call primary air. Now primary air is coming from uh, air handling unit central conditioned by the HU, not like air conditioning, if I say so, a moisture content of leaving air of the HU is lower than the dew point, at dew point in the zone, that moisture content. So it can absorb water vapor once it enters the room. So primary air, another function of primary air is to supply ventilation air and to absorb water vapor. Now, we'll have to supply chill water also to the unit. We call secondary water, either chill water or heat, hot water. The main equipment is induction unit. Now, induction unit, we'll discuss a little later. Sometimes you have fan coil units as well. Now, these systems were, came to existence in 1950s, 60s, especially there were no smaller compressors available in the world. All are very huge compressors during that time. All up, say 50 horsepower. They haven't heard about hermetically sealed fractional horsepower, no. Even 10 horsepower during that time, it was not there. So this was a right usage for zonal distribution. Otherwise it will be a all air system. With this, they could have terminal units in each room. They are very popular in hospitals, it seems. But since then, when, when smaller compressors came into air conditioning field, these were gradually faded away. But then suddenly, a decade ago, this came back in full thrust, full force. Now, these systems, these are fall into a chill beams uh, uh, in this particular induction systems all came back to life because of energy conservation need. Now, few details are here, induction systems. I'm not going to go through all that. You can refer later. Now, one thing, air leaves the coil in the main HU is 10 degrees C. And mind you, low a chill water temperature also required. 
and especially you need, I mean, the, the air leaves will have a lower moisture content. In turn, that can absorb moisture in the air in the room. Now, this is typical induction unit. This is typical induction unit. This is what you can see is a cross section, cross section of the induction unit. You have a circular spigot here. The condition air duct somewhere down and connect here. Now, don't think this, this particular uh, air duct is not big as normal air conditioning, but it is quite small because we are supplying only ventilation air with dehumidified air over and above what is required to absorb water vapor. Now, mind you, this air is pressurized. Higher pressure. Now, it eventually goes to a jet nozzle, creating surrounding becomes a lower pressure region and moves up to the, uh, moves through the grill and enters the room. Due to low pressure region creates here, room air will induce through this grill. Now, beside the grill, you have a single coil cooling coil. Now, that is a sensible coil. What is sensible coil? It's kind of a passive coil, no fan. Sensible coil means the surface temperature is above the dew point temperature of air. Now, this absorbs only sensible part of the room. Water vapor will absorb by the primary air. So these are called induction units. Big deal is this use, this use nozzles rather than fan, fan motor. No fan motors. Eventually, less energy consume entire system. Now, main, main equipment is a chiller and a main air handling unit. High pressure air is fed to in, in, in induction units, as well as chill water also fed to. Now, overall, what they say, Overall, energy consumption is less, less sound. But there are some limitations. We are going to discuss that later. Okay, now at the moment we are discussing main basic air conditioning system. First one was all air, now air and water. Third one becomes all water systems. So these are the correct words we should use. All water systems are quite popular in Sri Lanka, but it in a, a different name. Central air conditioning. Generally, people carried away when they when they see a ductwork, they think that is a central air conditioning system. No. Definition for central air conditioning system is a refrigeration machine located centrally. And it is basically a all water system. That means primary energy transfer is by water. No need to explain, no need to explain. A, if you take a pipe, cross sectional area, this will have certain water flow rate, liters per second. The energy carrying, same amount of energy carrying by a duct on the other side. Now this, I'm just, just telling, just this become, uh, we'll say this 100, 100 uh, diameter, millimeter. This might be 600 by 600. Why? Why two cross sections? The air is larger, piping, is so small due to CP, CP of air and CP of water. 
0 to and 4.2 is the difference. So water is having a higher heat carrying capacity, so smaller pipes. So all water systems benefits in that way. We need only smaller ceiling void space to carry chill water piping. Every zone you have a fan coil unit. That's the old water system. Of course, it is fed to a, I mean, a large auditorium or a, a meeting place or whatever, slightly larger places. We can have a mini HU or HU. But basically, all water system is chiller, chill water piping with fan coil units. Dehumidification take place in the cooling coil in the room, unlike six o'clock, unlike air and water systems, and there's a air filter, fresh air can be supplied to the zone. Now, key attributes in all water systems are that what I told you about CP, higher CP, space constraints. Now, no recirculation air through central system. It is individual zones. You can control individual zones. First cost, if you take, probably less than other systems, if you really design. Now, this fan coil, first introduced by train company, USA, in 1935. I got to re remind you that air conditioning was invented by Dr. Billy Sech Carrier, 1906. Centrifugal refrigeration, Dr. Billy Sech Carrier invented. So fan coil, just. It came to, 19, it came to existence from 1935. So it has a cooling coil, a air filter, air suck through this way, fresh air intake here, a fan. Sometimes you have draw through or sometimes blow through. Normally fans are behind. So pushing through the coil you call blow through. Finally, fourth system called unitary systems. Now, unitary means AC equipment is a complete assembly of factory matched equipment. Now, that means our cooling load calculations, our sensible heat ratio, all that is entering living conditions, we cannot perfectly match because it is factory matched equipment. Arrangement of unitary systems can be either single or split into two. Now heat rejection, air cool, water cool, or over two condenser, various types, either window type, split units, the correct word is DX split, direct expansion split type, single package rooftop, air cool, water cool packaged, and VRV, VRF, variable refrigerant volume, or VR, VRF, variable refrigerant flow systems, all comes under unitary. So you cannot compare apple to apple this system with a central air conditioning system. No, it is completely a different system. If somebody kind trying to compare a push bicycle against a, a car, you can't compare. Okay, unity systems, let's see. Now this is window type, two decades ago, this was the popular one. Now DX splits, everybody knows. Then comes VRF systems. One condensing unit can couple to a many indoor units, a lot of advantages. The length between these can even be 50 meters and higher. There are various advantages. So these unitary systems are popular in light and medium commercial range air conditioning installations, like shops, motels, two, three story offices. So though that is some glimpse of basic air conditioning systems. I would like to go through psychometric analyses also, because then only 
we can really see this new systems and their constraints. Just discuss very quickly psychometric process. Now, this is a psychometric process for comfort cooling. Outdoor air is introduced to the cooling uh, air conditioning apparatus. The room air at point two mix these together and enter in the cooling and dehumidification cooling coil. What happens is cooling and dehumidification process. At the end, air leaves the cooling coil at a lower temperature. Now, for instance, if, if the room is at 24, mixing may be 26, we are outdoor in Sri Lankan condition, 32 C dry bulb. So entering at 26 leaves at probably 12 degrees C. And then it undergoes another process. 52 room process, heating and humidification. Uh, I, I, I want to emphasize this simple air conditioning system comprises of many psychometric processes. One is air mixing, that is this, then cooling and dehumidification, then heating and humidification. Also, we have neglected heat losses gains for our convenience. But actual cycle, you have heat gains, like supply air fan motor heat, return air fan motor heat, supply duct heat gain, return duct heat gain. So heating, another process comes in. So why we need this for an important point, that is importance of coil temperature. Now, in practice, people more worried about energy conservation than the air conditioning machine operation. They completely forget what is used for comfort cooling, maybe process cooling. People won't give the precedence. They give the precedence to energy saving. What they do? They raise the temperature. In a chiller, they raise the chill water temperature because they immediately get a saving. The power consumption will reduce dramatically. Of course, we know because that is another proper energy saving method called chill water reset. But that is applied during part load conditions only. If I air conditioner operating for 24 hours, yes, during night we would be able to do that. But unfortunately people during day, hot sunny day, they are operating the chillers at a higher temperature. We'll discuss further. Now, just have a look right here. This is your room temperature to maintain. That is 24 C dry bulb, 50 RH. The dew point temperature of air is 13 C. That is from psychometry. So now you have a constraint on chiller supply and return water temperatures or the air handling unit coil entering leaving temperatures. That is, air handling temperature coil leaving has to be maintained at 13, maybe 14. Your room marriage, room marriage. I'll tell you, if you are running a chiller for a hotel, I will tell you even the daytime, no, I'm sorry, it, it, even if the part load conditions, you may not be able to do the re chill water reset. Sometimes the same chiller, chill water is going for kitchen 
cold uh, kitchen. No, that need a lower temperature, so that will affect humidification of normal areas. That will affect. So that is the upper part, upper limit of a chiller or a air handling unit operation. The lower part. Now, if you take a chiller, if you take a chiller, chill water inlet. Let's say chill water inlet. This is outlet. Now, usually, chill water inlet outlet. We'll discuss later in 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 detail. Uh, if you take this is twelve degrees C and this seven degrees and five K delta T. Now, now our question is how 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 did we arrive on seven and twelve? We'll we'll have answers for that later. Now, why can't it be six five four? Three will operate at three. Then we have a higher delta T. Obviously, if we are giving a fantastic high delta T, so that will reduce our uh, chill water pump capacity, the piping sizes, all that. But the problem is freezing, chiller freezing. Water freezes at zero, but the safest possible limit is four point five centigrade. Below that, we can't operate a chiller that will freeze. So minimum possible is five degrees. So remember, not to increase the chill water return temperature unnecessarily by raising the chill water sub supply temperature, chill water resetting, because that will affect the RH room RH. This is what happens when we raise the return temperature up. Say we are at twenty-four degrees C dry bulb. Twenty-four degrees C dry bulb constant will assume, and RH will be fifty. When the dew point is thirteen, we raise dew point. We raise the chill out outlet temperature fourteen. Resultant RH will be fifty-four. If the dew point is fifteen, RH is fifty-seven, sixty-one. So now we can see there's a limit. So keep that in mind when we discuss high delta T applications. We have a limit. We can't go like that. Importance of air handling unit. what i say the true air conditioner if i say true air conditioner is a air handling unit coupled with either air cool condenser or vrv condensing unit or a chiller but air side a true air side equipment is air handling unit why we construct it the client or the design engineer do that how we tell the ahu manufacturer this is these are the specification they do it for us these are the specifications we give them sensible cooling capacity sensible heat ratio cooling coil entering leaving chill water entering leaving supply air volume outdoor air fresh air volume sometimes we give fin spacing number of rows and chill water flow rate there are so many variables but we don't need to give all that we need only air flow rate entering and leaving but still but we got to give them advice when you insert this thing to the computer program please don't keep air conditioning capacity constant let it be variable but the constant should be your entering leaving conditions so air handling unit is the best Air conditioner. Now, finally, specification of air handling unit. You can see specification of air handling unit. What are the specifications? Total cooling load. That is sensible and latent loads, and sensible heat ratio. How do you find this? We'll have to do a proper cooling load calculations. Even though we discuss, we educate. Manual method that is here to understand only 
everybody has cooling load calculation these days, computerized methods. Hourly analysis program or so many other programs, not freely available though, but you can buy, purchase. Well, well, well. So will it run a cooling load calculations to get these things properly or Excel sheet, the ASHRAE CLTD method. Then you have another bit of specification left that is coil conditions, on coil, off coil. How do you find this? Best way to do the psychometric analysis. You can plot it and get it from the psychometric chart. Of course, carrier, early days, they had mathematical calculations to find this, but psychometric is the best way. Supply our flow rate, how do you calculate? You use Q equal MCP delta T, but still you need psychometrics to find this. Then reheating capacity. Nowadays people sarcastically say, oh, why reheating? Waste of energy. Of course, ASHRAE 90.1 suggests reheating not be used. But reheating is required in some instances to reduce relative humidity, not the moisture content, relative humidity. ASHRAE says don't use electric heating. But some other methods, we have so many other methods. But we got to calculate reheating component to maintain RH. Then humidification requirements. All that is will need psychometric analysis. So this is how uh, we find the specifications. So you have some, some, some notes, some few things for us to go through our main lesson. Right, thermal comfort also we should discuss a little bit because that is our main criteria in comfort cooling. Ashley standard 55. Thermal environmental conditions for human occupancy. Now definition for thermal comfort is condition of mind, or condition of mind, which express satisfaction with the thermal environment. That, that has a, 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 a huge feel, a meaning. Condition of our mind which express satisfaction with the thermal environment. Okay, there are factors that will affect thermal comfort. Two, two, two areas, one is personal factors, one is physical factors, directly affecting thermal comfort. Personal factors are metabolic heat production. Second one is clothing. I'm not going to go through all these uh, because that will be in a different lecture. Metabolic heat production varies according to our activity. Climbing stairs, walking here and there, talking to the boss, you get, <laughs> you get heat. Or you, when you see the exam paper, your metabolic heat production might go up. <laughs> then clothing, 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 yes, clothing is the in thermal insulation. That will affect the comfort. Physical factors, that is air temperature, mean radiant temperature, relative air speed, and humidity. Air temperature is dry bulb temperature, mean radiant temperature. Now, this involvement is you have seen some, some, sometimes you feel very hot. You think, okay, that is temperature is 38, could be 36. But when you measure air temperature, it is 34, not 32, 34. Because your radiant temperature, operative temperature is the term that we use. It is root radiant temperature plus room temperature. Normally in equilibrium conditions, 
temperature, room temperature, air temperature, air temperature, not the room temperature, air temperature, and the radiant temperature are equal. So operative temperature is room temperature. Sometimes radiant temperature increases. Best example is you are driving in a car. You are driving in a car. Your, your, your air conditioner, you switch on, you put it to 24 or you put it to 23. But direct radiation, your body temperature increases due to radi radiant temp radiation. Will that be okay? No, we'll have to put it to 19 C for us to give some, okay, that is different. So rel relative way our speed, of course, when, when, we are, when we feel hot without any air conditioner, what do we do? We, 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 we do this fan, we fan. Increasing air velocity give you some thermal comfort due to evaporation of water vapor, evaporation of sweat, but there are limits. Humid, hot country, yes. Cold climate, no, there are limits. So we, we are not going to talk all that. And the humidity, of course, humidity. Humidity will have a higher the humidity, lesser water vapor or the, or the uh, sweat evaporates. That's why, that's why we have seen uh, cricketers when come here, they play, they put the helmet like this and pour in water. Will you see that in England? Not even England, you go to India. Do you do that? They, you haven't seen that. That is humidity. So thermal comfort, the factors affecting those things are the factors affecting. Now, in, in ASHRAE 55, method for determining acceptable thermal environment in occupied spaces are done in two ways. Mind you, this is with air conditioning. One way is graphic, graphic comfort zone method. That is ASHRAE comfort chart or analytical comfort zone method that is ASHRAE. PMV, predicted mean vote. This is the graphic method, very, very common uh, comfort zone chart. Now, this is a psychometric chart and the 0.5 clo rhombus is here. If you, if your uh, operating point inside the zone, dry bulb temperature, wet bulb temperature, the resultant is falling inside this 0.5 clo zone. That means you are under PMB range and you are comfortable. So you can prove, okay? You can prove. Now in green uh, uh, building certification leads or Sri Lankan green building rating systems, uh, if somebody doing a, uh, project for ratings, they have to prove they are doing a building, okay, office plus auditorium. So then they'll have to uh, give a case study for office and the auditorium and prove you are thermally comfortable by either this method or the other method is PMV. Same, but uh, PMV, we have some calculation method. What is PMV? Predicted mean vote. That is, PM represents predict what of a large population of people exposed to a certain environment and they have got the uh, readings and their behavior and their satisfaction. Now in this 0.5 to 0.5, minus 0 0.2 plus 0.5, people are seems to be satisfied fully and dissatisfaction 10 and below is taken as a standard. That is the ASHRAE standard 55. So acceptable thermal environment for general comfort is PMV range should be between 0 0.5, 0 0.5 and PPD, dissatisfaction below 10%. How to prove that by calculations, you have this automatic uh, rather computer calculation program, you enter that. What you enter? Operative temperature or dry bulb, the air temperature and radiant temperature, air speed, 
relative humidity that you are going to I achieve in the air handling unit, 55. So you got to keep, think about your return air, coil temperature and the coil dew point. So 55 RH, metabolic rate, you got to see whether it is seated or running or filing, what kind of activity, clothing, what kind of activity. I, I have no time to describe all these. We can go through in some other lecture, all these. Uh, when you when, and then check automatically, PMV results comes complies with ASHRAE 55. So we can do the thermal comfort verification. Thereafter, there's another method method for determining acceptable thermal condition in the occupant control naturally conditioned spaces. Why I'm bringing these things because you should have this idea because so many people carrying different views. Now, basically, people think um, they can do ventilation for comfort in Sri Lanka. It is really not. In, 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 of course, you can do it in Badulla, Nuarelia, hill climates, of course, but may not be in Colombo and hotter and humid places. That we know because outside temperature is 32. If you, if you bring 32 to your zone, will that be okay? No. Now this is used for, this method is applicable only for occupant controlled. What is occupant, occupant control? That means you must have windows, operable windows that you can control. Naturally conditioned spaces. Oh, what is naturally conditioned spaces? You don't need to naturally condition mechanically. There is naturally condition. North European countries. Summer, winter, then there are in between naturally conditioned time. Ah, we can apply those things. There are no mechanical cooling and various other things to comply. So adaptive model is there. In this adaptive model, we can show outdoor temperature, how much you go can you can go up to get the indoor indoor temperature. You are comfortable, although it is going to thirty, but it is twenty eight and left side usually happens. Right. So this is all about thermal comfort. How we use Ashray fifty five, and keep this in mind when when we go through. Um, uh, next part of the uh, discussion. Again, thermal comfort verification, we can do the same way, adaptive method like this. Right. We are into new trends in air conditioning. First, displacement ventilation. Now, this is a new trend. This is a new trend, means it is not a new trend though. It is 10, maybe 15 years ago that was very popular. Actually, I was, uh, for a brief time, I was working in England. This was very frequently used. They use this thing in combination. What is displacement? Now, displacement ventilation has come from Scandinavian countries. During that time, 20 years ago, in 1989, it has accounted for 50% market share in industrial applications and 25% in office applications. Now, there are several uh, systems, a traditional displacement ventilation, displacement ventilation with chilled ceilings, displacement ventilation with raised flow. But we are discussing for our convenience here, the traditional ventilation for the time being. This is the basic theory. We supply cold air at the flow level. It rises upward, absorbing heat from the occupants and the equipment. And the 
convective plume goes up like this, goes up like this to the ceiling. So suddenly you might think, how can we send cold air to a flow? It will be freezing. Why we are, we are, we are, we are, we are now comparing our mixing principle. The air conditioning system that you have seen all over the uh, Sri Lanka is mixing principle. It mix entirely different to mixing. In mixing, we send air at 12 degrees C, yes, usually 12 degrees C, 13 degrees C to room. Now in this case, we send about 18 degrees C air and absorb heat rise up and goes back to the air conditioner. Now these grills, diffusers are specially made called displacement diffusers. One thing, one big advantage, if I go back to this, the biggest advantage of this air quality, in terms of air quality, air coming from the outlet, air coming from the outlet is with outdoor air, fresh outdoor air with oxygen. Now, in this method, it directly hits the people. So people get oxygen laden air first. So effectiveness is very high. You can see displacement diffusers. As per Ashray standard 55, the air velocity should be no higher than 0.25 meters per second. When you check, when you check, air is just flowing down. When you, when you, when you, when we, when we closer to, when we closer to the grill, you don't even feel it. Very minute feeling. So dumping air downwards. This uh, grill upside upside down. Sometimes installed this way also. The the supply duct coming from top, but basically it is upside down. All the duct work below the flow. Or they are when in our flow above the ceiling, duct work is going above the ceiling for the above flow diffusion. Now this is a simulation by trucks, air conditioning manufacturers. Was working, but now no, it is not to work. All oh, right, it is working. Have a look. Hello.
sorry i i think i i yes i i went through without the um, uh, mic again now this is um airflow pattern of the diffuser airflow distribution this is from nielsen 1993 uh, airflow contours are there with certain distances with the how they are speed these are very well suited for high ceiling heights but there is a big constraint we'll come to that later big constraint much popular in the world but there is a big constraint total cooling capacity offset by displacement volume can be calculated like this now i have given example here displacement system supply i is at 18 degrees exhaust at 27 with a 9k delta t constant volume and variable air volume mixing systems we have 12 to 13 supply air exhaust at 25 with 12k now we have bit of a bit of a worry in mixing system we have 12k delta t and displacement system if we use in sri lanka delta t is 9k whether we could get a good cooling load let's see see previous research during 90s they have indicated that in office environment with normal room heights displacement ventilation cannot maintain acceptable comfort for cooling loads above 25 30 watts per square meter very very low values unless the air supply is increased or use chill ceilings in combination but later 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 research research in 2003 has indicated that maximum cooling load handle can be high as 120 watts per square meter now if i if we convert that to ip it is 38 btu per hour per square feet now this is a good milestone can we use this in sri lanka that will have to see application limitations oh right maximum possible cooling load is 120 watt per square meter now sri lanka sri lanka is a hot and humid country climate zone is 0a from ashrin now we our cooling loads will take a residence bedroom cooling load is 158 watt per square meter about 45 btu per hour per square feet office buildings usually 55 btu per hour per square feet is about 190 watts commercial going up to 225 watts per square meter 64 so everywhere i mean a office building top floor is 225 watts per square meter common in sri lanka supermarkets 280 watts per square meter i'm telling you these things uh, with a little little experience because i'm doing i'm doing this now where we are far away from the maximum cooling load possible 120 i'll tell you example professor rahul atalage gave me a good opportunity i would have never never ever come across that we were in the same project he was the green consultant i was the air conditioning uh, this is uh, uh, jafna hnb he said chandana will put displacement ventilation this is about 5 5 7 years ago i jumped and took the idea because he is there as my guru and helping me and oh god that is wonderful i forgot all these things 
remember i had experience because i was doing this in the uk i had my selection program displacement diffusers from uh, uh, i forgot the name uh, british uh, firm uh, so i quickly used that as well then i basically designed the system all the displacement diffusers fantastic but then suddenly came to my mind oh swarna bhumi airport swarna bhumi airport now that was opened just after opening i had to go to bangkok and subsequently i have to go very often maybe 10 12 times for different factory visits every time i go well the first time i went to swarna bhumi airport it is completely concrete the jungle only the few name blow name boards nothing so i was thinking to myself oh come on this is this may be this may be modern modern airports but later only i knew they were installing all the gadgets the what you see all these things came late but no cooling very strange i had time every time i go to the floor i go for looking any maintenance staff most of the time i luck i was lucky to catch all somebody and i asked them please uh, i'm i'm so and so i'm also air conditioning man can i see the uh, diffuser they come and open the diffuser for me air comes out and the speakers everything inside okay fine 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 slowly i check the temperature my goodness that is for me it is not 18 even it is 18 but the thing is not cooling after sometimes uh, eight seven months it was slightly cooling then a doctor i can't remember his name who designed this came to sri lanka for a ashri dl lecture it was in a instead of engineers i jumped and went to him and told him doctor your airport didn't pull down very easily it took more than six months he said hey come on what the hell you did how did you know all this i said no no i am a visitor now so the all that is in my mind you don't believe now you go in this airport everywhere mushroom air conditioning units dx units because these systems are not always suited for hot and humid climates but when you go to when you go to uh, this one i have been to this these are my photos these two are my photos this is one of the largest airports in the world now istanbul airport entire system is displacement ventilation and is fun functioning very well so what we are going to learn now i want to tell you now we are talking about 120 cap that's more than that we can't do why why all these buildings in northern europe they are thermally insulated buildings continuous air barrier we'll you are going to learn that later building air tightness is checked building envelope low very low u values so obviously your cooling load is less now for the examples roof u value attic type 0.021 watt per square meter kelvin for london but sri lanka 0.027 slightly higher that is that is ashray ashray want us to drop it for green building mind you normal our our ones are above one wall u 0.10 ashray want us to have 0.27 but we don't need at climate zone zero we don't need thermal insulation so our values are very high flow u 0.057 sri lanka 0.322 this is zero value fenestration 0.42 Sri Lankan value is 0.47. These ashray values for Sri Lanka. That is why the North European countries the cooling load is low. Now, from CBC application manual 10, you can 
usually their loads are 30 to 40 watt per square meter. Those are the places good for this displacement ventilation. Now, how they achieve in Swarnabhumi, more than that, you see, they are having solar reflective tinted glasses, 60% reflection, absorption 36.5, only 3.5 transmitters. Great. There's a membrane. There's a membrane to prevent transmission. Yeah. And no, not even that, the flow, flow cooling. Oh God, 13 C AIs through the flow. So all that gives substantial surrounding to use this displacement. So be careful in Sri Lanka, we may not be able to use. This is London Heathrow T5, latest terminal. Sri Lankan, uh, uh, Sri Lankan goes to this. These are displacement diffusers. When you open, these are the grill. That is about displacement systems that we know. It is most unlikely we use displacement diffusers here, unless otherwise we use dedicated outdoor air system to bring down sensible load, especially latent loads. That is okay, but then cost will be prohibitive. Next is induction system. Induction system, this is going back to all water that we discussed, rather air and water, I'm sorry, air and water systems. This is the induction unit inside this. Primary air comes here, secondary, secondary water comes here. Induction happens through this grill. Induction happens through this grill. And cold air comes out. Primary air coming this way. So cold air comes this way. Room air in induced. But maximum installation is 120 watt per square meter load. That's the only constraint. This is how induction system and maximum possible moisture content, we can calculate that. Because we need that moisture content low in order to absorb water vapor in the air. We can find the refrigeration load by this equation, if you like. Induction systems advantages. Individual room temperature control and providing heating or cooling year round. Less space required for distribution systems. No large ductwork. Reduce airflow combined with high velocity air reduces overall primary air duct sizes. Yes. Power savings are realized by using water rather than air. That is, of course, we have proved that. Reduce size of central air handling apparatus. Dehumidification, filtration, humidification performed in central location. Outdoor air supply is positive. Block load rather than the sum of peak uh, that determine the capacity. Space heating can be accomplished without operating the central air system, only sending hot water only. No H2 is required. When all primary air is taken from outdoors, recirculation occurs only within the room, thus reduce the risk of cross contamination. Good answer for a Patients' rooms, COVID-19, all that. The system component life expectancy, 15 to 25 years. But there are disadvantages. Operating staff capable of understanding the system cycles and change your procedures. Most of building applications, these systems limited to perimeters, spaces only. Controls, little complex. Second ray of flow, Induced cause dirt to accumulate on the coils. Oh, that is because you can't have a air filter that have a pressure drop. These induced air. Secondary air flow induced cause dirt is the same thing. Yes. So, so these are the disadvantages. And this how the psychometric looks like. This is the central cooling coil. 
This is central cooling coil. And this is the room cycle. Now, when you look at this, a large dehumidification, remember that later we need this. We'll go to chilled beams. We go to chilled beams. This, what you can see, are chilled beams. Very common in Northern Europe. Very common. I have a lot of stories and examples to tell you. Um, in London, in England, what they, what they do is, 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 a, is a, a hybrid solution always. They give a bit of uh, chill beams, bit of, bit of uh, induction units, and they are mixing some areas. All together, they will have a lower power consumption. These are the chilled ceilings. Same principle. You would think when we install these things, there will be condensation. You might think we have to have an umbrella huh? inside the office. No, no, no. Because these are sens sensible passive cooling equipment. Sensible cooling only. The surface temperature above the dew point temperature of air, it is not cooling. Then you will ask how the latent heat removal. Now, I am telling this over and over again. Latent heat, sensible heat. Now tell me, now tell me, this is a room. And this is a air conditioner. This, this is duct work. This is duct work. So return air. Goes back to this outdoor air. And this is extract air. These are the air conditioning cycle. And you have a cooling coil here. Now, inside the room, all the heat transfer take place. And heat generation, internal heat. All are sensible heat. Now, this sensible heat, heated air, taken back to the cooling coil and removed. Sensible heat is removed. Now, what, I, what is I'm asking is, what is latent heat? What is latent heat? What is latent heat? Latent heat is uh, uh, during change of state. During change of state, the heat either absorption or Heat dissipation during change of state. No, 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 no. What I'm asking is where, where, where is this latent heat? What is latent heat in this case? You know, all latent heat about water vapor in the air. Now, water vapor contributes to this room by so many ways. Air infiltration, water vapor comes, W is moisture content. People inside, they emit equipment inside that will give off water vapor. So all that water vapor, H2O, is carried to cooling coil. Now, in the cooling coil, in the cooling coil, when air passes through, this water vapor, which we can't see by the naked eye, will condense to water and removed as water. We call condensate. So this will give off latent heat. Oh. Now sensible heat in the room. Sensible heat is in the room. Latent heat latent heat is in the coil that you've got to remember very carefully air conditioned room you have only the sensible heat there's no latent heat there's only water vapor water vapor has to go back to the cooling coil moment it condenses latent heat gives off why i'm telling you this every air conditioning machine we must have positive return back to the air handling unit. 
so every time we should we should emphasis we must have a return adapt if supply air fan cannot tackle have a return air fan as well the systems doesn't have return air duct if it is a hu directly coupled to return rh cannot rh cannot bring down so if you have not not done this before please do that and phone me tell me what you have achieved you have achieved wonderful comfort conditions so we'll have to bring all the water vapor back to the cooling coil now passive sensible coil means now the cooling coil will operate above the dew point so it, there will not be any condensation so how we now tackle here latent low you know what we do we'll have to couple a special air conditioning system that we are going to discuss later do us do us dedicated outdoor air system dedicated dedicated outdoor air, air handling unit must be coupled to this now that will send air here with a very low kilogram per kilogram very low moisture content air lower than the moisture content in the room desired conditions moisture content in the room so you are sending air moisture content is lower than the desired condition air moisture content so that can absorb water vapor that's how you remove so chill ceilings are very popular in other countries big questions we will not be able to do that because that is also comes under the same same situation 120 watts as the cap so chill beams further there are two types active and passive chill beams what you see here is a passive chill beam a passive chill beam now passive chill beam that has no powered ventilation natural convection what you can see is natural convection see natural convection air cools down and drop down what happens is when 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 positive uh forced convection is not there this convective principle applies hot air rises cold air drops i have i have heard seen people telling in our air conditioning system our, our air mixing air conditioning system they call hot air rises cold air drops no it will never happen because there is forced circulation forced convection no no now this is not first force convection this is static hot air rises up goes through this comes down with high density so it drops down again like chilled ceiling here surface temperature is above the dew point temperature of air if you need to tackle high humidity you will have to send dehumidified air to this place as a second remote otherwise we can't do that then in england why in germany france yes because their outdoor temperature in summer is 24 degrees c 50 rh 24 c 50 rh it is crazy how can it be 2450 is it 2450 we'll see what is the moisture content 24 50 moisture content is about uh, 0.0117 quite low quite low why it is, is lower than that this is active beam now these chill beams are looks like a beam you have series you have series chill beams together in active beam like induction unit you send primary air and here you send 
second chill water similar to induction unit of course this induction principle active beam so again this is the constraints are similar now condensation prevention see dew point outdoor the indoor air dew point is 13c so coil has to be below 13 or about 13 what happens if you take a simple thing to understand this we take a, a glass and we put some ice cubes suddenly you notice you have condensation and you get water why why say outdoor temperature is 32 32 c dry bulb this is zero probably your surface is 10 degrees c dew point is 19 but your surface is very much below very much below so it is similar if the surface go down 13 there will be condensation so you keep it above so these are chill beams different types practical guide to chill beams active beams 120 watts per square meter chill water temperature 14 to 18 heating water temperature 40 to 60 static pressure 50 to 250 delta t2 to 4k so these are the these are the problems these are the problems now i was telling that uh, professor atalage gave me a, a chance to do displacement uh, a system but i found i forgot to tell you the rest of the thing i i remembered uh, swarnabhumi problem then i i ashray little handbook that gives 120 watt per square meter so we discussed and we go back to our normal air conditioning systems so that's the problem now limitations again 120 watts that we know see i have given some examples in paris summer 28 19 42 rh this is the moisture content 0 0.1 london 0 0.1 new delhi 0 0.18 Bangalore 0 0.13, but Sri Lanka 0 0.02. So it's double. That means 10 grams, 10 grams of water vapor in one kilogram of dry air. In Sri Lanka, it is 20 grams of water vapor per one kilogram of dry air. So that is a problem. Limitations. Now, now these things are applied to it places with continuous air barrier. You may not have heard. We need a continuous air barrier around the envelope of the building. Now, this is in 90.1. All the buildings in Europe, you have continuous air barrier, maybe in US, continuous air barrier. We did it in Sri Lanka for the first time. Uh, we, we, we did a, a very, very, very good green project in Katunayaka, Star Garments Innovation Center. It had continuous barrier and that will give us a problem because there is no water vapor transfer. So RH become a big problem. So you have to drop the RH very seriously and it should drop without incurring power so i we utilize which we utilize heat pipe systems that worked very well we, we we did for special certification not leads it is higher than leads called passive house certifications from germany consultants were, was uh, from america so that building became world's number two building, world's number two building, passive house rating for a factory. You can just Google and see. So that building has continuous air barrier. See, the problem is 
air leakage in a building. Now, we don't take much notice of infiltration. That is a big load, air infiltration. Opening doors, windows, the cracks, leaky buildings. But in North European countries, they are heating. All the building has to be very tightly designed and maintained. Why? This is the problem. Now, <clears throat> if you take a building, small building, say, let's say the capacity is uh, 100,000 BTUs per hour. The same thing in winter, it will be about 2,000 BTUs. Very much 2,000 BTUs. So such a low heat load, heating load, if there's leaks, exfiltration, rather infiltration, cold air, there will be very high cost for heating. So all the buildings are leak tested. Now, CFG TM23 gives the testing building for air leakage. Bisria is doing this. This is the usual pattern of a normal house. They open the door, fix this uh, bracket with the fan itself, and they calculate the delta P. How do they do? They pressurized. 50 pascals is the requirement. Minimum is 25 five pascal. And check the uh, leakage index. Air yeah, volume at 50 pascal divided by the area. So uh, most of the buildings are pressure tested. Even that building that I told you, we had the continuous air barrier. We tested like similarly for leakage. So, so all that is required for chill beams. Otherwise, they are not, although these are new systems, we may not be able to use it properly. Then high delta T, hope I'm not going through too much quickly. High de delta T applications. High delta T applications, I don't know, very few, uh, a few applications, probably uh, uh, very few applications here, but we know that is high delta T is a benefit, of course. Now, before that, standard delta T, what is standard delta T? It is from HRI standard, not as we want. It is for from HRI standard, chillers are tested for HRI 55, 550 to 5590 standard. Temperature difference of the chiller inlet outlets taken as 54 Fahrenheit, 44 Fahrenheit. When you convert, it is 12.2, 6.6. We take it as 12 to 7 with a 5K delta T. Now, this is the standard. This is what we discussed a little while ago here. So, return chill water temperature limitation is 13 degrees to maintain good RH. Supply chill water temperature is limited for water freezing. Minimum is 4.5. So, we are working between that. So, HRI specified 7 and 12. That is normal standard delta T. But ASHRAE, after 2016, now they are specifying high delta T applications for chill water coils, they say, chill water coil selection. Coil selection to provide 15 Fahrenheit delta or 8K. How to get 8K now? Now we are, our limit is a, we at the moment, we are at the moment 12 and seven. We can go this way. We cannot go that much higher. So what we do, we go back. We need 8K, we need 8K. So 5C and 13C, five, between five and C, instead of seven and 12, that is 
high delta t. I have small example, delta t phi application. Say, 1050 kilowatt R, there is a refrigeration load, 300 tons, operate in 12.7 delta t 5k, CP 4.2, you have chill water flow is 50 liters per second. Nominal pipe size would be 200 millimeter. If you select a pump with a 25 meter head, it would be 18.5 kilowatts with 82.2 efficiency. But we transform that to 8K application, same chiller, now operating 13.5, relatively 8K, CP same. Now the chill water flow drops to 31. That is a great, great, that is a great advantage. Why? Chill water is, flow is slow. So you can have smaller piping, smaller pumps, because pipe sizing is 150, it's up 200. Pump head 25 meter, now your pump selection, 11 kilowatts instead of 18.5. That is also 80% efficiency. See, flow reduction is 37% and pump reduction 14. So, um, we need, we need high delta T, but ASHRAE also given there are limitations. What are the limitations? ASHRAE 90.2016 20, comes with exceptions. Coil layer pressure drop. 175 Pascal. This is air pressure drop or higher. Face velocity should be 2.5 meters per second for dry coil conditions are exempted. For dry coils, sensible coils, no. Individual fan coil units below 5,000 CFM, not required this high delta T. Oh, they say constant air volume systems, no. No high delta T. So we'll have to find what it is, why, why, why the, I, have, I haven't gone through that. Why, what are the difficulties, why it is VAV possible and this. It could be because it is varying load. You have a varying load tackled by varying, yeah, yeah. That is, that is happening, happening very, very closely. So that would be the reason. Coil selected at the maximum delta T allowed by the chiller. If, if the chiller is not allowing, you can't do that. Passive cooling coils, chill beams out. No, you can't have high delta T. Coil with designing entering chill water temperatures 10 or higher. Coil with, that means coil with chill water temperatures 10 or higher, you can't have high delta T because we, we, we have to operate at five. Coil with design entering air dry bulb temperatures, 18 C and low. So those are the exemptions. With exemptions, this is quite good, quite good. But you've got to remember, these are the limitations. Our air conditioning systems, 95% in Sri Lanka is constant air volume. VAV, real true VAV systems are very handful. Out of which I have done few. But finally, there's another problem. Apart from high delta T, there's a low, D, low delta T syndrome. We are at the end now. Uh, we are having a low delta T syndrome also. See, this is the biggest problem. We designed 712 operation, we commission, but a couple of mon months later, we find sometimes, not a, a, always, delta T becoming low and low. What is the problem? Now see, especially variable flow chill water plants designed to maintain relatively constant delta T. The difference between return and chill water supply temperature, but in almost every real chiller plant, delta T falls well short of design values. The result is that the flow and load ah, do not track. Flow and the load do not track. 
you should require in that additional chillers brought online. Oh God. The HUs are not loading, may, may sometimes may not be achieving temperatures, but still we have to load another chiller because our flows are not correct. Now see, to uh, the, 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 the additional chillers be brought online to maintain flow requirements, even though none of the chillers is fully loaded. Oh, chillers are loaded, but they themselves are not fully loaded. Both pump energy and chiller energy is increased accordingly. Many designs and retrofit measures have been tried to resolve this problem, but they are sometimes expensive and not always successful. In most plants, it is not possible to avoid degrading delta T under all operating conditions. But I have come across fantastic example. Nobody of you will believe. That is here with a properly designed BMS and use of flow meters to track flow through branches and achieve full flow through coils. As per the load conditions, this load delta T syndrome can be resolved. Now, this has been done two places. One is at Cinnamon Grand, which we have did the design and then install, change the chillers. And again, Ceylon Towers, that I will give you as example. Ceylon Towers, uh, actually Green Building Council, I give a, a green side of it, that that change chillers give us 31% carbon footprint reduction. Beside this, I'll tell you, Ceylon, uh, Ceylon Bank has 350 screw, two numbers working. 1995, they started, actually I designed that building, 700 tons and eventually fully loaded. Chillers were fully loaded. That three, 352 was not designed for fully loading, but until 2015, 2014, both the chillers are running and the efficiencies are far too low because that is in 1995. To be precise, kilowatt per ton was 0 0.83. Now, very recently, in 2016, replaced magnetic bearing chiller. One chiller, 425 tons. I replaced uh, new cooling towers very recently, but a chiller, a hottest day, at two o'clock, I can remember, chiller is running at 71% load, achieving entire load. Forget 71%, full load, 425 tons. Instead of 700 tons of refrigeration those days, merely you have flow meters, you always try and fully load the air handling units by means of water. The water flow is not full, is the problem. Finally, dedicated outdoor air systems, that is the final one, but uh, we need to discuss that. That is one of the best newer systems came into practice. Now, the idea of this dedicated outdoor system by Mr. William J. Code, ASHRAE president, 1999, no, 2002 probably, he came to Sri Lanka. William J. Code. Now, he thought in big air conditioning systems, why? I mean, big air conditioning systems, the outdoor air component is large. Now, outdoor air is bring into the air handling unit and the coil will have to size to handle all this latent load in vain. Why not? We handle outdoor air separately, room separately. That was the idea. So, as per this figure, outdoor air is handled separately. Conventional system handled separately internal loads. That is the basic of dedicated outdoor system. Now this is a dedicated outdoor 
handling unit that improve humidity control, reduce energy, desire to simplify ventilation design and control, desire to use for passive chill beams applications, yes, reducing installation costs also. Now, this is the last, this I will explain and we'll, we'll come to the end of the uh, presentation, but uh, this is quite a important thing. Now, I have put my previous psychometric diagram handing outdoor air, huge cooling coil. Same thing happens here, OA to C, huge cooling coil. So the Delta H is this, this Delta H. If you multiply it by M dot, you get the cooling capacity of the coil, huge coil. Instead what we do, instead what we do, part of the, part of the cooling coil or dotted line handled by Handle by, by something else, OA to OA dash. That is right here. OA to OA dash, we have a total energy thermal wheel. That is a thermal wheel, but we have energy thermal wheels that is slowly rotating. What it, what it does, what it does, cold air or return air at 24, 25 degrees C cools the incoming air and also dehumidifying because it removes water vapor. So cooling and dehumidification, mind you, this is free. This is free, OA to OA to O dash is free. This is free. Then it comes, then it comes then it comes passing through a preheat coil that will operate some other time, but OA to OA double dash, there's another desiccant wheel that was a enthalpy wheel, total energy, but here a desiccant wheel that will absorb water vapor, chemical dehumidification happens. What it does, now it does, little bit of a evaporative cooling kind of thing and enters the cooling coil. See what happens. Now, water vapor, whatever comes removed from here, removed from here, comes and comes back to the cooling coil and removed. Again, if some water vapor removed from here, comes back and removed. Why? This desiccant wheel is a de desiccant dehumidification. C to C A. So you have entering air going through total energy wheel, goes through a desiccant wheel and comes back with a cooling coil, cooling and dehumidification, and then chemical dehumidification here, end up here. So outdoor air now leaves at here and massive, 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 uh, a, a heat, uh, rather energy saving, OA to OA dash. So these units are used, applications are very quickly. Now you have a local units, you can, dedicated unit can supply conditioned air direct to the space. Or if it is a air handling unit, or you can correct directly supply to the space while air handling unit supply the other balance or dedicated unit can supply to local units directly or dedicated unit supply side by side or finally dedicated unit can be supplied to the ceiling plenum ceiling plenum that will go through the local unit so those are the ways doas is used High initial cost compared to similar HUs. That's the only constraint, about 80% higher cost. Additional plant room space there, but a must for chill beam in humid countries. Not even chill beam, high latent load, like, like high, uh, let's say, restaurants, large, large restaurants. Now, uh, 
um, hotels. Earlier they call uh, uh, 24 hour restaurant. Now it is called uh, uh, a different name though. So 24 hour operation, large restaurants. These are the best. Do us dedicated outdoor systems. So conclusion, a conclusion, never increase the return chill water temperature above 14 C. You have drastic problems. So don't do, don't act things preceded by energy saving. First do the comfort air conditioning. With that do the energy saving. Next air conditioning system comfort applications require, mind you, 60% below RH. Normal air conditioning, we don't have RH meters controllers. Okay, uncontrolled. So you have to design the plant has to be below 60. That is ASHRAE uh, 755. Now I have seen it is going slightly up, but we'll, it's a humid country, it has to be below 60. For my opinion, you target 55 average. Direct application of displacement ventilation systems are not recommended for Sri Lanka as it is cooling load limitation, 120 watts per square meter. Induction systems have the similar limitations. Chill beams are not recommended unless otherwise incorporated with DOAS units with continuous air barrier. High delta T applications to constant air volume systems is not applicable and limited to 8K applications. That I have made a mistake, I want to correct that. High delta T is applicable only to variable air volume. Now, when you receive your Slides, please correct this variable air volume and 8K. Doors are very useful to hot and humid uh, countries, frequently used to save and achieve RH. So these are the nutshell uh, conclusions with regard to new trends in air conditioning and the limitations. We can't just Grab all the things as, as they appear. Hope you have got something out of this. Thank you very much. Prasanna, over to you. Yeah, thank you very much uh, for your info, uh, informative session. And uh, I will directly uh, go for the end session. And our first question is. Question is how can we calculate the PM? Calculate the calculation manually? For example, PME calculation. No, 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 no. I didn't hear. I didn't hear. How can we? How can we calculate the PMB calculation manually? Calculation. Is yeah. there any formula for PME calculation? Yeah, for for everybody, for everybody. Suddenly my, uh, suddenly my, one second, please. I, I will give you to write it down. Uh, please write it down. There's a tool. There's a tool to calculate PMV. CBE thermal comfort tool. I, I'm, I, I cannot write, I don't know why this is stuck. My um, C, B, E comfort tool. C for Charlie, B for Barter, E for uh, environment, let's say C, B, E. Comfort, thermal comfort tool. So you can enter dry bulb radiant temperature or operative temperature, 
There are speed, RH, flow level you can decide, uh, met value you can decide, and see whether we are achieving that. So that, that way we can find the PMB. Okay, thank you, sir. Second question is, how to do the selection of draw through and blow through FCUs? Uh, well, uh, I will put it this way. I will put it this way. Now, fan coil units generally comes comes as blow through, blow through, blow through. Uh, the coils are behind. So when we see the fan coil, front is coil, behind you can see the fans. So blow through for low static pressure applications. But if it is high static pressure applications, those comes as draw through, fans are in front. So we are not going to uh, do any calculations, nothing, we got to select. So always mind you select for room air conditioning, it has to be small units blow through. Thank you, sir. Third question is 158 yeah. watt per square meter for residential buildings in Sri Lanka is taken from a standard or energy guide or by practice. Wait, wait, 158 watt per square meter. Ah, yeah. that, that is that is what I what I told. Yes, yes. Ah, oh. good, very good. Wait, I'll go to that. Jesus Christ, I can't find it. Okay, fine, fine. I'll tell you, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. These are called rule of, rules of thumb. Now, to find rules of thumb, there are no, uh, there are no uh, uh, books other than uh, Australian Air Conditioning Institute, IRA Institute Handbook. Actually, I'm using that uh, check figures uh, for uh, MSc lectures also. Those are <clears throat> for checking your calculation, not to calculate cooling loads. Now, these things are 45, 55, and 64 BTUs per hour. Uh, part of it from me also, <laughs> because my little existence in air conditioning field I have seen this uh, quite right. So this is very close to Australian thing as well. Okay. Uh, 45 BTUs per hour is normally for uh, residences. Residences. Quite sufficient. Now, actually for a bedroom in a house, we need 5,000 BTUs. 7,500 is more than sufficient. But what if now people go and land a 12,000 BTU air conditioner? Horrible. 9,000 BTU is the maximum. Upstairs, you may have 12,000. So all these around 45. 55 BTU for the 190 watts for office building entire Sri Lanka. It is everywhere. I don't know other people are doing uh, excessively higher things, but these are everywhere I, I i check my things and which, which which are working for last couple of years so this you can fall back thank you sir uh, our next question is is it possible to implement underflow air conditioning systems in sri lanka which is similar to displacement ventilation um no Underflow ventilation is happening in Sri Lanka. Underflow, under, not ventilation, underflow air conditioning is happening in 
Sri Lanka for server rooms. So we call downflow air conditioners used for uh, underflow systems. Now, underflow systems sometimes without uh, uh, underflow systems with with what we, we are calling uh, downflow units are forced. Still, that is for server rooms. But for normal air conditioning, I don't think that is uh, correct because if it is in the same uh, 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 displacement ventilation, it will never, never, never work. It, it is good for European countries because of the heat load. Okay, so our next question is, can we control condensation by mixing and diverting three port valves in chill beam applications? Can, come again. Can we control condensation by using of mixing and diverting three port valves in chill beam applic applications? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I, it sounds correct because the, if you have a three port valve, we raise the temperature. That's what, that's what, because in, in, in principle, we can't bring down the, uh, in principle, the chill beams are sensible cooling equipment. Now, little by little, they are trying to introduce uh, a latent capacity also with a drain pan. But having a three-way valve, definitely three-way valve, then you can, you can, you can, you can increase the uh, dew point when, when there is condensation, of course. But, but I doubt very much these things will apply to Sri Lanka because massive uh, moisture content when a door is open, there will be huge uh, water content. So it is no point uh, alleviating. It has to elevate about the dew point by having a three-way valve. Uh, what 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 dew point we are going to maintain? No, it has to be above the dew point. Otherwise, will condens condensation will take place. Yes, our next question is: If AC system has both CAV and VAV AHUs, you meant that. High delta T is out of the equation. Not really. We, we have to do the. I mean, Ashray Ashray ninety point one is uh, is uh, uh, is specifying. And our our one of one of our consultants uh, uh, who is uh, I can't remember his name. Uh, uh, our team uh, who is uh, in the uh, IDH uh, uh, Lekavasam, engineer Lekavasam has uh, involved with that high delta day in uh, Colombo city center. I mean, it is happening, but, 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 but the thing is the limitations, whether then, whether, 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 whether we can operate because what I have seen people simply get away from the comfort and trying to do all the juggleries for energy conservation. No, no, our prime aim in air conditioning is to maintain conditions. 55, 56 at least, 57 RH and 24 or 26, 55 in a balance. Suddenly if the RH is 60 and temperature is 27, that is not a comfort air conditioning. So what we mean, high delta T, yes, please do it. But remember, not for constant air volume. As she says, don't do that for constant air volume. And you don't raise the temperature 13 and above from the return. Because I have checked these places, they are operating, they are operating temperatures crazy. They, they have forgotten. I'll tell you a bit, a bit, a bit of an example for you to learn. I designed the Jetwing Hotel. Uh, uh, Columbus 7 handed over commission but one day I got a call from owner itself please go and see his big problem condensation so I knew this condensation is a is an issue it is operational issue so I, we went there it is a very dull day temperature was quite quite 
quite good in outside. I measured that before I enter in the hotel. Enter the hotel lobby. Definitely condensation on the glasses. So I took photographs and asked chief engineer and the crowd to come. And I asked precisely these questions. I asked, "Do you have a chiller in this hotel?" He said, "Yes, two chillers." He does. Then I have. Are there any compressors? He got angry. Yeah, there are compressors. Then I ask, "Are these compressors working?" Yeah, working. Oh, then okay, that is okay. Then I ask, "Can you remember the chill water entering leaving?" Ah, uh, it is. It is. It is about uh, out. Chill water out is twelve degrees, and chill water inlet is about eighteen. I said, "Very good." Then we'll go down to chiller. So we told him, "Look." Chill water outlet should be at least for seven and inlet twelve, but you can raise chill water reset during night to eight nine, but to to twelve. Then I it was a centrifugal chiller. I quickly trying to say that they said no, don't don't do that, please. My GM will sack me. So this is what you learn. I put the thing to eight, not seven. Wait half an hour. Went and took the pictures. No condensation. It is all about dew point. It is all about dew point. So that place, their main criteria is what energy saving. Your current bill. Entire hotel suffering. That is happening everywhere. So remember. Whenever you get a call for condensation, don't think about fresh air hitting uh, a cold space. Condensation before that, you can check where <laughs> chillers are working, compressors are running, chill out, <laughs> outlet, inlet temperatures. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Uh, our last question to the chat is: uh, How we can ensure proper mixing between outdoor air and supply air in the Doa system. Why? Why? why I, I I don't understand that. You are asking how we can ensure. So you mean to say uh, outdoor air and return air? What is that? Not, not outdoor air and supply air. I think it should be return air. No, return air going go, going going. Actually, return air, return air going through this way. Outdoor air comes like this and going like this and comes out. So I think. Uh, The question is answered. You mean to say this this bypass for for low load conditions? Yeah. Thank you very much, sir. That's all uh, from the that's all questions from the chat. And uh, we can allow with the time permits. We can allow for uh, two rates and questions. And. Uh, Someone has raised his hand. Uh, his name is uh, narrated as iPad. You can ask a question if you have any. Please ask it with your mic and please ask the question if you have any. Okay. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I, I'm Jayanta Radhatunga. Uh, Chandra, yes, sir. I have, I have a comment and a question. Yes. Yes, sir. Uh, as far back when I started my work in 1968, I was at the National Textile Corporation to create textile complex. Uh, I, there, 
there they had a very straight system because what is uh, not a straight then not a straight different system uh, but uh, the requirement was this for spinning purposes spinning the yarn that is the thread uh, you need a very controlled uh, humidity that means uh, humidity should not be low it should be not be too high also uh, temperature is not a much of a concern but humidity is a very big concern so there were uh, chillers and there were central air conditioning the chillers uh, were really uh, ammonia chillers at that time a large ammonia chillers they were sending chilled water i can't remember the temperature chilled they water were? to chilled water can you hear me chilled water to uh, air handling yeah, yeah. units yeah air handling units now yes. those air handling units yes. are not like pipes they are water sprinklers the yes that is cold water sprinkled onto the incoming yes. uh, the circulating air the yes. air is circulated from they brought from inside and then taken out and then stay now it is the it is so so chilled that it is yes. below the dew point of the air so yes. that although the water is sprayed uh, yes. in fact in reality air lo loses water yes not yes not that air absorbs water air loses water because of this yes and comes back into the uh, the factory factory is hot yes. so it, it goes up and the relative humidity is maintained at the, the required level now this was uh, this was a very strange thing but people could not understand it uh, as some disturbance many people could not understand this many people could not understand this because uh, uh, we are spraying water to reduce the water the can you hear me hello can you hear me there something happened yes yes we can hear you uh, okay uh, you know it was it was strange to many people who did not understand the psychometry because we are spraying water in fact the real effect is to reduce the water so uh, so this 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 happened that then the plant was operating this uh, is a very large plant in fact it was the largest uh, refrigeration plant in the country at that time uh, but i my question is whether do you have similar things now anywhere have you come across such things anywhere in the present time that's a question can you hear me can you hear me now there is a disturbance uh, uh, yeah there is some disturbance yeah oh, uh, can you can you kindly uh, intervene and see what it is sure sure we are looking at the, the ishan uh, from which mic the, the noise is coming i also i'm also trying to raise uh, trying to uh, yeah kindly, I... kindly mute all the mics please no what happened is too many people may have muted no, sorry I'm sorry i found, you found now it. now uh, now is it all right uh, i'm very sorry uh, mr angunga thank you very much for asking me and uh, rather rather pointing out this that is air washer yes that those are called air washers yeah. and uh, i just want to uh, pop up uh, this one very quickly to understand uh, just give me a second because that is a very valid uh, point i will just give me a second i will i will pop up this um, engineer dalugada is uh, any technical issue from your side no 
no no that, that that is all and very very sorry it has suddenly suddenly gone to a it took lot of time for me to find what was the problem uh uh apologies uh, for that inconvenience um that's okay yeah. we can proceed i'll go to show you uh, uh no anyway that's too late but uh, what um, uh, engineer giant uh, uh, told me to uh, 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 just discuss was um air washer systems for humidity and slight cooling required for yarn manufacturing because what what normally yarns are breaking if the humidity drops so what we normally do we give the the machine is uh, air washer a fan and a, let's say evaporator cooler is like this evaporator cooler there is a pad over which you you send water so this predominantly wet and there is a pump circulated back so the air comes here hot and dry leaves 100% humid and this water now sending through a chiller chill water so these are cold and fully humid so those used in yarn industry call air washers thank you very much uh, mr ramkunga is our boss uh, past president mr jayendra ramkunga thank you very much thank you sir uh, and thank you mr jayendra also and uh, if you have any other raise hand questions please uh, we are having another 2 3 minutes please raise your hand if you have unmute your mic and uh, you can directly ask from the presenter so uh, anyone wants to raise uh, questions please uh, we can have about 5 10 minutes more hello hello uh, yeah uh, good evening uh, mr chandana uh, this is suranga since you quoted my name just to share some view on this uh, points actually uh, having respect to you sir uh, actually uh, what i how i read uh, these uh, high delta t aspects of course as one who have practiced this uh, maybe at the first time in the country Uh, of course there are a few, uh, some challenges as uh, the presenter very correctly raised uh, but uh, let me uh, uh, highlight two points uh, as per the way that i have understood while uh, i am working with that particular project starting from the uh, cooling load calculation to the coil selection and commissioning uh, following the whole process uh, uh, one thing i i want to just uh, raise that the exemptions given in 90.1 is but i feel it's exemption not limitations so why they have given as uh, exemptions for the cav uh, what i uh, understood was right i may be wrong but what i understood was uh, when you go for this high delta t cooling coil selections uh, you have to go for a deeper coil to achieve the same off coil conditions in that case your air side pressure drop slightly increases so if you go for a cav probably since your flow rate constant you are just pumping energy waste little higher because 
your data p your side pressure drop is slightly higher than in conventional design that's what i see why they have given it as a exemption and is uh, of course it is not for a it's not a limitation it's not a limitation of course it, it's an exemption number 2 just to uh, share with you some thoughts when it comes to this uh, uh, coil selection as we very correctly said uh, the 13 degrees of coil condition or the dew point condition should be met by the uh, cooling coil say if uh, we need generally 12 degrees uh, of coil conditions uh, with my experience and the exercise with this particular project and further findings Uh, the same uh, conditions that you can make with 712 coil as the conventional uh, the off coil condition same can be met by having say like 714 714 is the one that we practice in our particular project that you raised right so how do we understand that actually uh, i also got confusion by sending uh, taking 14 return how can you make 13 or 12 degrees of coil but uh, when i dig to the detail i was also in a con uh, bit of a con uh, uh, confusion or rather a misunderstanding that uh, the coil construction when you see a coil construction generally they are counter flow counter flow means of course uh, the, the chill water returns off coil uh, on coil condition on coil condition that means if the room temperature is 24 is the return it it hits 14 degrees return or uh, the supply side is again 7 may be the inlet you are you are targeting 12 degrees so 13 degrees uh, off coil so in that configuration I, i how i understood that say like 14 7 degrees coil i break into two coils in series like 14 12 which is a dry coil virtually where you don't get any humidification dehumidification then 12 to 7 is our conventional coil so whatever the condition that you can achieve with the conventional coil within my high delta t coil still there is a part Uh, that similar to the 712 coil so that's how i address all those things uh, just to share there may be some uh, I, i i speak this uh, subject to the corrections of course uh, with my uh, personal observations and views uh, again uh, one more thing to add uh, ccc was the very first project completed in sri lanka but uh, i i know bit uh, since i am very interesting on this type particular topic there are one uh, very 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 A famous uh, office complex is, is popping up, which design and almost the selection even done for eight, I think eight fourteen point five or somewhere. That is the delta T, which achieve approximately closer to sixty percent SHR, which is fairly good in uh, normal office complexes. Then uh, you know that uh, very uh, the set three pi office complex, new one phase three that has also been done for like uh, high delta T seven fourteen point five. so with that uh, there may be some of course uh, restrictions as you very correctly said sir uh, but uh, these are the points that i want to share with you uh, with my practical experience on this high delta t again i i thought that i should uh, make a word on this since uh, like uh, exactly one year before the last year the starting public public lecture was done by myself on this particular topic so i think uh, it's uh, my duty to uh, highlight Uh, the thoughts behind on what i have raised uh, on this forum thank you very much sir uh, uh, thank you very much for your time thank you very much thank you very much for your, your insight that's great uh, that's very quite good but my 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 uh, my uh, like into uh, i as without 714 why why can't we make it 13 six you know because keep 12 13 they are because uh, this is a humid country this is a humid country so uh, why not be the same delta t now 7 714 uh, that is 7k all oh, right fine uh, well operate it that way uh, good we, thank you very much uh, yeah, yeah. for your insight just 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 a, just a second sir uh, that is correct sir we also further lowering the chill water supply side though we are getting the saving from the pump side we are compromising the chiller lift then uh, your chiller consumption may be uh, offset by the saving that we are getting uh, regarding the 14 degrees uh, uh, since you have gone through 90.1 latest they are saying the return should be minimum 40 that means they are asking us to go for little higher if possible of course there can be uh, yeah so thank you thanks yeah thanks thanks uh, well because 
uh, there's uh, sometimes uh, uh, most of the things we may not be applied because uh, that is us even the us conditions now see uh, why hri conditions uh, th- uh, 29.5 or 30 35 because they are wet bulb is 24 our wet bulb is 27 so 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 uh, we will have to be very careful in application also thank you so much great so thank you very much for all the questions are there any more we can take only one because the time is uh, now passing now passing we can take one more questions if you otherwise uh, we can go for the end of the session so ishan selvi then uh, close the uh, question and session yeah it seems that no one is uh, going to be asked any questions now so uh, shall okay. we wind up the given session and uh, move to the next yes thank you yes okay so before uh, delivering the vote of thank i would like to take one minute to uh, basically uh, appreciate and thank uh, engineer a resource person to the engineer chandana balagudu for the very valuable and informative presentation and knowledge sharing uh, done with us he spent in more than 2 hours with us today so thank you very much sir for your all the uh, all the time and your efforts and your commitment thank you very much so i call uh, engineer dilan tilanga to de- deliver the vote of thanks and wind up the session thank you engineer narangoda good evening ladies and gentlemen this is dilan tilanga and uh, we we'll go to go to the final remarks of the day we just witnessed a really interesting lecture today with the participation of more than 160 members in the audience being engineers we all should be alert about new trends in the sector to give optimum outputs for our stakeholders just as we aimed to this lecture i'm pretty confident that the uh, lecture today served us in a greater way in a greater way to enhance our knowledge at the same time it's been a great pleasure for us to begin the public lecture series for session 2020 yes. and 2021 with uh, one of our past presidents being the resource person engineer chandra dalugada our resource person of the day was consistently supporting building sir engineer section committee for many events in the past dear sir thank you very much for dedicating your valuable time one more time for the benefit of this interested crowd this event wouldn't be a success if there wasn't an inter- interactive audience like you all raising the questions you had sharing the thoughts you have helped others to learn the content for a further extent thank you very much for the participation today finally we would like to thank isl staff for supporting us to complete this lecture successfully from the beginning to the delivery of the lecture with that we'll conclude the lecture today and this will be our last lecture for year 2020 and we'll come up with uh, more lectures more interesting lectures in 2021 as well and we warm, warmly invite all of you to be a part of our lecture series good night everyone merry christmas and wish you all happy new year 2021 goodbye